All right, so the first step is going to be setting up your Hostinger account. And to make sure you get the best deal with Hostinger, I recommend to click on the first link down below in the video description. This is my personal referral link, which will enable you to get an additional 10% off of the already discounted sale price of Hostinger by using my promo code. So once you click on that link, you should get to this page right here. And once you're here, just click on claim deal. And this will take us to the different hosting plans. Now the plans that I would recommend is either the premium plan or the business plan. Now the difference between these two plans is mainly the CDN feature, which you get with the business plan, which will uh, mean that all of the data of your website will be stored on multiple servers across the globe, which will increase the average load time of your website and therefore you're going to have a higher performance. So if you want to get the best performance, I recommend to get the business plan. But if you have a bit of a lower budget, the premium plan is also a great choice. So for this video, I'm just going to go ahead and choose the business plan and click on add to cart. Then here on the next step, we're going to have to choose our payment period, which means how many months in advance we're going to pay for our hosting. Now, the more you're going to pay up front, the cheaper it's going to be on average. So the cheapest option is the 48 months option. By choosing this, you're going to pay for four years of hosting and you're going to pay $3.99 per month on average. And after those four years, it's going to renew at $8.99 per month, which is also lower compared to the other options here. So for this one, you're going to pay for 24 months in advance for 49 per month. And then it's going to renew at $9.99 per month. So if you have the budget and you know that you're going to be using your website for multiple years, I recommend to go with the 48 months option. But if you have a bit of a lower budget or you don't know how long you're going to be using your WordPress website, then you can also choose one of these other options here. Just keep in mind that for the one month option, you don't get the free domain for the first year and you also have a $5 setup fee. So I don't recommend to go with the one month option. Uh, I would go with the 12 month option if you have a bit of a lower budget. Now I'm going to be using this hosting account just for this video. So I'll just choose the 12 months option and then move on to the next step, which is creating your account here. Just type in your email address and choose a password. And then we can move on to the last step, which is choosing your payment method. But before I do that, let's scroll down a bit further and click on have a coupon code. Here you can enter my coupon code, which is Maddox Media. And once you click on apply, then you can see that you get an additional 10% off of your hosting price. So once that's done, you can just choose your payment method right here. Enter your information if you want. You can also do that later and just leave these things empty. But then just enter your payment information down here and click on submit secure payment. Great. So now our Hostinger account is created. And after that, we get to this onboarding sequence of Hostinger. Now we can all do that ourselves in the dashboard. So let's save some time and go straight to our Hostinger dashboard by clicking on the Hostinger icon here at the top and then click on leave. And this takes us into the Hostinger dashboard. Now here, there's a few things we want to do to complete our setup. So the first thing is to verify our email address, the one we have used to sign up for Hostinger. So just head over to your email inbox and then you should see an email from Hostinger called verify your email address. Just click on this email and then click on verify email. And this takes us back into our Hostinger dashboard. So we can just close the other two tabs up here because we don't need them anymore. And the next step is to set up our domain name. So the domain name is just the name of your website. Like for Apple, it's called apple.com. For Facebook, it's facebook.com. And we also wanna have our own domain name for our website. And because we have chosen a hosting plan of 12 months or more, we can get a free domain for the first year by clicking on claim domain right here. And then here we can look for the domain that we want to get. 
Now, for example, if you're gonna create a personal website, it could just be your name.com, or if creating a website for your company, it could be your company name.com. In general, I recommend to keep it as short and as simple as possible, maybe something that's easy to remember. Now, sometimes it's gonna be hard to find the domain that you actually want, and then you're gonna to have to be a bit creative. Something you could also do is change the domain extension here at the end. Usually, I recommend to go with a .com domain. That's what people are familiar with, so this is something that I would prefer, but sometimes, maybe when your personal name is already taken, you can also choose a .net domain. But like I said, I recommend to go with a .com if you can. Now, my personal website would probably be called medicsmedia.com, but I already have that domain, so I'm just gonna add a one and look if that domain is available. Now, you can see this one is, domain, is available, so we can actually purchase it here, or we can get it for free for the first year. And in general, I recommend not to use any numbers in your domain, if that's not part of your brand name. But this is just for this video, I'm not gonna be using this domain any further after this video. So I'm just gonna be choosing this one right here and click on claim domain. And then to finish up the registration process for your new domain, you're gonna to have to enter some contact details of you if you're creating a website for yourself or of your company if you're creating the website for your company. So just enter all of your details and move on to the next step. Once that's done, we should get to this step right here. So let's click on continue. And then we can see an offer for hosting, but we already have hosting. So we can just ignore this and click on skip. I don't need a website. So now we're back in the hosting or dashboard and here under domains, we can see the domain that we have just registered. Now to complete the registration process, we wanna click on our domain. And then here we can see that there's a pending verification. This means that we also need to verify our email address for the domain as well. So go to your email inbox and here you should be able to find an email that says, please confirm your contact details for your domain. So let's click on it. And then here we just click on this link. Then here we wanna confirm all the information by ticking all of these boxes and click on submit. Once that's done, we can close both of these tabs and go back to our dashboard. And here, let's reload the page. And now we can see that the email verification status says verified. So now we have successfully registered our domain and we can move on to the next step, which is installing WordPress. So to do that, we're gonna click on hosting in the top menu. And then you should see your hosting plan right here. Here we wanna click on setup. And then here we can save some time and just skip all these questions. So let's click on skip at the bottom. And here we can choose how we want to build our website. So we can use WordPress with AI or we can use the Hostinger website builder, which is their own product of Hostinger. And I've already created a video on how to use this website builder. So if you're interested in this one, I'll leave a link to this video down below in the description. But as this video is all about using WordPress, we're gonna stick to WordPress with AI and click on select WordPress at the bottom right. And now we have to create our WordPress account. This is gonna be the account that you'll use to log into the backend of your WordPress website. So you can just use the same email that you've used for your hosting account, choose a password and click on next. And now Hostinger already wants to install a theme to our new WordPress website. But for now, we just wanna install WordPress and we're gonna take care of installing a theme later on once we have installed WordPress. So for now, we're gonna skip this by clicking on skip here at the bottom. And then the same thing here with the plugins, we don't wanna have anything pre-installed. So we're gonna choose no, I want to select plugins manually and click on next. And here, let's just deselect all of these plugins that Hostinger wants to install to our WordPress website and click on skip. And here, the same thing, we don't want any pre-generated content, so let's click on skip. And here we can select the domain that we want to use for our WordPress website, which again is just a website name. And here we can see this is the domain that we have registered before, so let's click on it and click on next. And here we can choose the server location of where our website files will be stored. 
Now, in general, it's best to keep the server as close to your website visitors as possible because this will reduce the loading speed of your website. So personally, I live in Switzerland, so the best place for me would probably be France. But I've chosen the business hosting plan, which has multiple servers anyway for my website. So it probably doesn't make that big of a difference. But if you've chosen the premium plan, then I recommend to just choose the server location where you live or the closest to where you live or where your website visitors will be. So if your website visitors are mostly in Europe, then choose a server location in Europe. If it's in the United States, then choose one in the United States. So I'm gonna choose France and click on next. And now WordPress is being installed. So now WordPress has been installed and we are back in the hosting or dashboard for our new website. And before we move on and go to the actual WordPress dashboard for our website, I wanna quickly check if the SSL certificate is installed on our website. So let's go to the left side menu and click on security and then let's go to SSL. And here we can see that the SSL certificate is installed on our website. This is basically the lock icon next to your website URL, making all the connections secure. So it's very important that this is installed on our website. So let's head back over to the dashboard here and then to actually go to WordPress, let's click on admin panel at the top right. And this takes us into the WordPress dashboard for our website. Now, this is the backend of your website. So you're gonna come here a lot while building your website. And also in the future, whenever you wanna change something, you're gonna come here into the WordPress dashboard. 